you also keep hearing this term UML modeling, right? So what is UML? UML stands for Unified Modeling Language. But what what exactly is it? How is it related to object orientation and 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 our use cases, right? So where does it all fit into uh, this? Now. <coughs> If you look at any engineering stream, right? Any any engineering uh, project that you take, right? You are not directly creating your final product. Right? So either you be it a civil engineering where you are constructing a house, or maybe a mechanical engineering and then you are automobile engineering and then you are designing a uh, you are you are developing a car, right? You are not just going to start the assembly line and then uh, to uh, you know uh, start creating the car right away. What do you do first? You would model the model the you know the final product. You will create a replica or a prototype of how the final product would look like. Right? Now that could be through a series of diagrams, or it could be a miniature version of your uh, you know product as well. Why? Because you know it's easier to work with these prototypes. Even though if you create some errors, that's still okay. You are not wasting too much of money. <coughs> For example, let's take this house. If you want to construct this house, you, on day one you'll not start, you know, laying your bricks and then uh, or laying your foundation and then starting your uh, construction. You'll not do that. You'll first plan for your house. You, you'll you'll you know create these multiple views. What is the front view looking like? What is the top view looking like? What is the side view looking like? Okay. What are those uh, specifications? How high the you know the wall length should be? Then what is the roof uh, slant? Right, all that has to be clearly documented using these diagrams. Right? Why? Because you know we clearly have a point of reference. If if I give it to the construction worker, you will know okay, you know what this this has to be a 10 feet wall, so you construct a 10 feet wall. Right? He blindly can follow this. So all the thought process goes to in the modeling of this product rather than during the actual implementation. Similarly, in software also, the developers blindly go by what you have uh, designed uh, or, or, the, or the prototypes that you have created. Okay, so they don't do the th you know the thinking, right? So all the thought process is put in by the technical architect and and maybe the to an extent with the business analyst as well when they are creating these models. Okay, so in software, in specifically in object orientation, we model using unified modeling language okay so uml creates a simplified representation of the system using some series of diagrams so we are not getting into the coding or we are not actually creating those screens and all but we are creating some diagrams there are nine set of diagrams in uml which try to represent and, and model how your final system would look like so all your thinking would actually go in creating these nine diagrams and then the you know you give it to the programmers they would just you know blindly you know implement that in a particular technology let's like say java or dotnet right but the underlying logic how how these are interactions between these objects or, or what data needs to be passed all that you know logic is clearly captured as part of this model <coughs> okay so that's the that's the connection between uh, you know object orientation and then uml model okay so why this name UML? What does UML means? UML means Unified Modeling Language. Okay. Now, when object orientation started, people were you know uh, were excited, and then everybody started their own modeling language. And of late, some after some time, you know, people figured out that you know we have too many versions of modeling language, and it's becoming difficult to track which modeling language to use. Right. So what they did was they formed one organization called Object Management Group, which would oversee this UML standard. So they combined all the existing, uh, you know, um, modeling languages for uh, object orientation which they had, and they created one single uh, modeling language out of all that. Right. So the most popular models before UML was there was from Gradibu to Ambag and then Jacobson. So they picked up the best out of all these models and then created a UML standard, so which has this set of nine diagrams. Okay, 
now these using these nine diagrams we can actually define how the system would work and, and you know think through all those logic and, and explain all the details right so similar to what these uh, you know these views uh, <coughs> does for a uh, construction of a house these nine diagrams does the same for your software okay so all your thinking and then modeling is actually done using these nine models and the actual uh, you know uh, implementation is just a you know uh, a blind following of these uh, logic what you have listed here in a particular language okay clear till this point in time do, do you get the context of what uh, you know object orientation is about what uml is and, and where do use cases stand Right. So, use cases is one of these nine diagrams. Okay. Now, broadly, your UML diagrams are classified into three sections. Right. Your functional view is coming using the use cases. Right. Then, the underlying structure of what are all the various objects, how would they interact with one another, which of them can be combined and create one module. All that is is considered as structural modules. You are defining the underlying structure of your system, right? Then how would how do these objects interact with one another, right? So how does that change object changes state over a period of time? What is the process or control flow? All that is covered as part of your dynamic or behavioral models, okay? Which is given by your sequence collaboration state chart and all. So. <coughs> these various diagrams have uh, you know different uh, perspective about the system coming out right so you will first define the functionality using the use case diagrams then you will define the you know the class object diagrams uh, which will basically define uh, what are all the various objects in your system and all then uh, you have the uh, you have the behavioral models, uh, you know, uh, which will show how they interact with one another. So all this is is uh, is uh, you know um, is 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 clearly defined by each of these diagrams. So once we have all these nine diagrams, when you know we have a fully thought through a system, similar to like you know when you are constructing a house, you generally have this you know the front view, then the you know the the, the side view. Right, and then the top view. Right, so like only once you have all those three views, then you can visualize the three D object. Similarly, once you have all these nine diagrams, then you can finally visualize how your final system will look like. Which means you have taken care of all aspects of the system. Okay, so now these nine diagrams are handled by different people. Right, you would you would only contribute to the use cases. So this is where a BA contributes business analyst will create the use case diagrams okay the rest of them are mostly done by the technical architect the person who is designing the system okay now <coughs> having said that the use case or the functional models are the first thing which are developed uh, in the system right so you play a critical role in ensuring that you know the requirements are, are, are comprehensively captured and correctly captured using the use case this use case in turn would be used for creating your class objects and then the rest of the diagrams right so this forms the basis right so this would be used as an input for creating the rest of the diagram so your technical architect is is completely dependent on you for what the system should be doing okay so that is some context onto the uml and uh, you know uh, object orientation so simply put it you know we would capture our requirements using use cases Right, so use cases is part of UML. UML is used to model object orientation uh, systems. Okay, makes sense. Any questions before we move ahead, so guys? Are you able to hear me? Sir, of course, diagram like a representation in the form of diagram. Sorry, can can you repeat the question again? It is not. Uh, like the mo model. Models are representing uh, like as All a diagram. These, yes, most of them are diagrams. Even use cases would also have a diagram, but it would also have some details which will capture as well, right? 
So uh, the rest of them are mostly diagrams. Right? So we'll, I'll give you a brief overview about that after we understand about use cases also. But you know, we are not involved in any of these. And so let's let's make that very clear. You now these these are something which is which are owned by a technical architect. Okay. So within UML, you are you are only confining yourselves to use cases. So we can actually ignore whatever we have learned till now, and then you know talk about use cases that would still make sense. But you know, if you have the context, you know, of where your uh, you know your your output would be used, right? You'll will be able to appreciate that much better, and then do a better job. Right, so that's the reason I give the context of explaining. You know, overall, when you are talking about an object orientation system, what is UML module? What is the use case diagram? Where does this overall fit into the big picture? Once you have that bigger view, then you will get into the details about what exactly is expected out of you and what is it that you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Right. So see again, uh, look at it at a very uh, high level point of view. Don't try to get into the details about how object orientation works and all that, right? So you know, if I have to crisply summarize what I explained till now, object orientation has some advantages over uh, <coughs> process-oriented languages because you know it helps manage the complexity better, right? And how object orientation works? It identifies the various objects and it makes them interact with one another. Okay. Then how do you model for your uh, object orientation? You model that using UML diagrams. UML is a set of nine diagrams, right? And uh, you know the first diagram is for capturing the functional view. Then there are some four diagrams which will help you capture the structural view, and then there are four di diagrams which will help you capture the dynamic or, or the interaction between those various objects, right? So this will understand, help you understand the requirement. This will help you. Uh, list down all your objects and then the modules. Then this is will help you in interacting those uh, objects with one another to perform the functionality, right? So you know broadly these are the three categories of UML models, right? And we as a business analyst own the use case diagrams. The rest of them are 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 owned by the technical architect. Okay. So when you when you create the BRD, uh, you you would end up Writing the use, drawing the use case diagrams, and then the use case description for it. Now, uh, again, like uh, Andy was mentioning yesterday, not all projects you would get involved right from the start. Right, so there could be some, you know, uh, enhancements projects, which wherein you already have your system built. Maybe they want to make some minor modifications. Right, in those kind of situations, you will not go and then draw the use case diagrams and all. Right. So use case diagrams are generally used where you are developing a system from scratch, or, or there are, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> a significant enhancement is being done. Then you'll go and then say, okay, now we need to. Uh, uh, this is the use case diagram, and this is the use case diagram, right? But you know, if, if let's say you know there is a requirement wherein you have an existing screen, and then you are capturing some set of information, right? Now. Uh, the the customer comes over and then say, you know what? I want to add these two additional pieces data points in, into my uh, screen, right? So your requirement is very simple. You just add these two data points into the screen, and then you'll have to clearly point out, you know, what are all the changes in the screen, and then you know where what where this data should be going and stored. Maybe you know you look at the ER model also if possible, right? Otherwise, you just list down the screen and then you know it, at a very high level you you specify that this is a requirement that is. But if a, if a system is being built from scratch, you generally take that up using a use case diagram. Right? All your requirements are captured using use cases. Okay, <coughs> makes sense. Right. Okay. Now, broadly, use cases has two components again. So, how do we capture the requirement? There are two main things. There is a use case diagram. Which pictorially represents what is it that we are trying to do in the system. Okay, so this tells that you know there is a customer who is doing these five things using the system, right? We call this as a use case diagram, right? So usually there would be one use case diagram for a system, unless it's too complicated a system, big one. You will break up into modules, and then each module can have one use case diagram. But 
<coughs> usually a system tends to have one use case diagram and you see all these uh, elliptical symbols here they show what are all the features that the customer or, or, or the actor whoever is using the system for what he would be using the system for okay <coughs> now this is this itself is not giving us the details that right? you know if, if I have to capture the functionality about checking an account balance in a mobile banking app right so you know the details are not in there here I can just know that you know the customer would use it to check his account balance but how does the overall process happen what are the steps involved in it how does the screen look like what are the backend interfaces required all that is not coming out here so what do we do is we pick up each use case we pick up each use case and then write a use case narrative for it right so we'll capture all the details right like you know uh, what is the purpose of the use case what are the preconditions what is the primary flow alternate flows exception flows the post conditions a lot of details about each and every use case is captured here right <clears throat> so this is a use case diagram so overall this is the use case diagram and these are the use cases okay so every use case every use case would have a use case narrative capturing these details okay so you end up with you know if there are like uh, five use cases in it you'll end up with five uh, <coughs> use case descriptions capturing the, all these details for each one of them separately okay so that is how you approach your requirements okay so uh, you know we we briefly covered about these preconditions primary flow alternate flow exception flow when i was talking about the elicitation techniques how do you know that the requirement is complete what all details you need to capture right i said then you, know, you should you should ask questions on uh, you know, what are all those preconditions then what is the primary flow events alternate flow events, right so that the kind of question that you ask is broadly based on the use case description so if you can come back and then fill in all these details you can be pretty much sure that you have captured all the details about the requirement right so that is the structure for a use case now we will <coughs> we'll go through that in detail in tomorrow's session about what how to draw the use case diagrams for a particular requirement how do we write the description for that right we'll pick up some small examples and then you know uh, take understand it in detail in tomorrow's session okay